And for those of you who are tuning in early or watching this in the replay, we are just kind of in our little uh, free zone before we start the show, uh, waiting for some ads to play. So I hope that you guys can uh, introduce yourselves in the chat to everybody. And if you uh, see a name you don't recognize, make sure you go over and check that channel out. There's a lot of great channels in the chat. Having said that, welcome to the Car Guy and Six Fan Show, Season 6 episode, I don't know, but we're here, and my name is Jason. I'm the Car Guy of the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. Welcome, and my co-host is down below. Yeah, so that makes me Grant Tommy, or straight Six Fan, and that's Six Fan of this operation, and so welcome in, everybody. Jason, yeah, you're right. I, I can't keep track of what episode we're on, but I think you're odd number episodes, and I'm evens, so... It's five or seven. I don't know. I'm definitely odd. But speaking of fives and sevens, um, like the the old five seven LS one, we were just talking about this backstage. I'll turn it over to. Her. We're really excited to have it, our, our guest, and I'll let her do do her own introduction. So, hey guys, my name's Liv Liv Scafidi, and uh, yeah, I'm just so excited you guys are having me on. I'm a hot rodder, aspiring drag racer, and I work on an assortment of like LS base engine projects. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be a lot of what we're going to be talking about tonight. But before we jump into the hot and heavy questions here, we want to make sure that we uh, acknowledge some of the people who have joined us early in the chat. Grant, why don't you head over there and see who's joined us tonight? Oh man, well, we've got uh, got a laundry list here this evening, but uh, I want to start with Bondo Bird because they're admitting to being their first time here. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing I know who brought that person into this, this live stream. So thank you, Liv. Uh, hey, Josh. <laughs> One Fire Media Group, Melissa Nunez, of course, helping moderate things. Hobbins Hot Rods, Classic Drivers Garage uh will r we got the our friends over at coastal auto reaction luke and babo wills wheels and uncle squirrel and i think i've caught about all that i can see now but yeah jason why don't you uh just set us off right into the first question yeah so one of the first questions that uh, i always like to ask of our guests uh before we even get into talking about youtube and projects and all this stuff is quite simply what are you doing? Why, what got you into YouTube or what got you into cars? I guess and we'll leave it with that. What got you into cars? Hmm. Okay. That one, uh, a lot of people tend to assume that I come from a family that's into cars or has a ton of projects. And the truth of it is uh, that is so far from the case. My entire family, they're just not into it. And how I, got into cars was through watching car movies so it was I remember it being sophomore year and I had the biggest crush on Burt Reynolds <laughs> and I started looking up some Burt Reynolds movies to watch and Smokey and the Bandit popped up and of course that scene that really iconic scene where you see the 77 Trans Am rolling out of the back of the Kenworth that is just what sealed the deal for me and I was hooked on Pontiacs and especially just second gen F bodies in general. And so I, I chalked that up to how I got into cars. So, so Burt Reynolds in his, I, every time I think of that movie, I always think that he had that, that signature laugh where he's like, <laughs> kind of, yeah. that, every time, I don't know why I can't separate those two, but that leads right into probably the, the next best question is you talked about falling in love with Pontiacs, but in second gens. Uh, so you have two seventy one firebirds yourself but um what else is it about the pontiacs that that makes you just hooked <laughs> well i mean i just always so i have my 71 firebird 71 el camino and between the two i've always just had more of a preference to pontiac purely just because i thought they've always nailed it in the styling department i just thought those cars looked a lot cooler looked very different especially going into the early 70s and i've just really preferred that styling so that's why i choose them however a lot of pontiac purists will hate me because i tend to swap late model gm engines into them so we do get a lot of people who talk about uh you know how much they despise the ls swap the world <laughs> and you know i mean no matter how you feel about it, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not one of those guys or that I am, but uh, I've I've often talked about wanting to LS swap in my square body, but um, I, I haven't done it yet. And I just don't know much about it. Those who are doing it 
learn the tricks and the ropes and stuff like that. Uh, but I commend you for taking on the efforts anyways. Um, the, I guess one of the things you had mentioned in your introduction was that you're an aspiring drag racer. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what you've done so far as far as drag racing goes. As far as drag racing, um, my my experience kind of dates back to maybe five years ago. I started out in all of this doing photography. So I was never actually working on any vehicles at that time. I was merely taking photos of cars and getting invited to uh, private test in tunes just to cover people's track days. And that's kind of what got me hooked on the sport itself. And ever since then, I've just been working my butt off trying to put together uh, both the Firebird and El Camino and get them set up for drag racing. So both of those cars are completely untested. I'm hoping by next month I'll have the Firebird actually on the drag strip. But in terms of driving, I was uh, really lucky that my friend uh, Steve Dulcich, he invited me out to uh, drag race the Bonneville uh, his 67 Pontiac Bonneville. It's got a uh, 400 Pontiac in it. I mean, it was running 16s that day, so I can't call it a race car by any means, but it was so much fun. And that's really my first experience with racing was with that wagon. Well, yeah, the, so Steve Dulcich, and you were talking about your, I'm guessing that connection maybe came through the photography side of things as well. But uh, talk about that relationship and how that's grown or, or where it's at, like all of the different, I'm sure you got more than one good Steve story. <laughs> yes, um, Steve and I met, um, it was through Freiburger. Um, I had reached out to him saying, hey, um, love Roadkill Garage. I've always wanted to take photos of some of the cars that you guys work on on the show any possibility of making that happen and uh luckily for me he was all for it he connected me with steve and then i think that was three years ago um uh, my boyfriend and i headed over took a bunch of photos and i got to know him he is just as cool in person, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so over the last couple of years, just been um, going over to his place and recently getting the fail guy running. We kind of helped with that project a little. And then most recently, we took the Bonneville drag racing. So going to Steve's is always a fun time. <laughs> Well, and I think when you're into uh, photography and especially when you're photographing cars, you're, you're bound to uh, bump into some of these people uh, who, you know, who are known way up there in, in the um, upper tiers of, you know, automotive work, whatever it is, drag racing, uh, car shows, TV, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, what, uh, besides YouTube, have you ever been in a position to see yourself on TV? Mm, trying to think here. I not yet. That is something that I've talked about and, you know, have thought that would be really cool to do. Just haven't come across the right opportunity yet. But uh, YouTube and Instagram, I'm having so much fun with social media. And so that's kind of just where I'm at right now. Well, real quick, before we get into the next question, I did want to uh say thanks on jason's behalf to bondo bird who gave a 499 super chat so uh just a reminder that you know both jason and i we are keeping track of the super chats uh, as we have in seasons past and um who knows maybe at the end of the season there might be things mailed to you i don't know we'll, we'll put put it that way but Liv, i want to go back to you were talking about how you know just pontiac in general, from your perspective, you feel like the designers uh, historically just knocked it out of the park more. And it's it's funny you say that because here on the Car Guy and Six Fan Show a couple seasons ago, we did a uh, F bodies. Uh, we pinned almost every year of Firebird and old well, generation, we'll say Firebird versus Camaro. And uh, Pontiac did win. John DeLorean, of course, the the lead yeah. designer, kind of helped that helped square it away. But so if you if you go start to finish uh of all generations of firebird which one which one is your favorite i 
I'm pretty biased. I, I really did want uh, an early second gen. So the 70 to 73, that front end design, I love even like the tail lights on them. I'm, I really wanted one of those. So it took me quite a while to actually find one in the condition that I needed. And um, yeah, I just, that, that section of years, I just, I love it. They, they look so good. <laughs> So a few minutes ago, we were actually speaking of Steve Dulcich, and I see him actually in the chat. Welcome uh, to the Car Guy and Six Fan Show, Steve. <laughs> For those of you guys who are just joining us, we have Liv Scafidi as our guest. We're asking some questions, and don't forget on your way in, hit that thumbs up. The more thumbs up that we get on these live streams, the more YouTube may push us out there uh, for a bigger audience. So thanks for that. Uh, Liv, you mentioned... Uh, social media and Instagram. I see that you do have a very big presence on Instagram. Um, like how do you find Instagram works in conjunction with your YouTube? Do you find that you're driving a lot of people from one to the other and maybe vice versa? You know, I've actually found it's not the case. Surprisingly, I found that my Instagram audience, I mean, granted, there are some people who cross over, you know, I recognize some people in the chat who I know through both Instagram and YouTube. But I'd say in the promoting of YouTube, I haven't seen too much crossover. But that's okay as well, because on my YouTube channel, I have this whole completely separate audience that sort of knows me for my engine projects and my junkyard videos. So I think it's kind of cool that in a way you could be growing two different platforms and two different audiences. And then eventually if you can get them to cross platforms, it's, it's even cooler. They get to see more of your content. Well, it's a, it's a really interesting topic for sure, because I, I, you know, I find people obviously in some of us, we prefer one platform over the other, or maybe invest more time in how well we do on one versus the other. But um, I just think there's, you know, I, I follow all these things. And they talk about that, like 85% of all internet traffic will be video based by, you know, next five to 10 years or something like that. And uh, I, but you know our attention spans keep getting shorter and shorter so i feel like in a lot of respects the instagram platform actually this whole phenomenon everybody wants this 15 second video thing yeah. whether that's an instagram story it's TikTok, it's you know youtube shorts um so it is really interesting but but when you find yourself from the creative perspective do you do you prefer one over the other do you enjoy producing content on one of the platforms versus the other I'd say, ooh, that's tough because I like them both for different reasons. I like Instagram because, um, you know, it is sort of a shorter shelf life in terms of you post a post, people will see it for about 24 hours and then it's kind of gone. Very rarely do people go back on your page to kind of look through. So I feel Instagram is, is such a great way to keep people up to date very currently. Whereas YouTube, you know, the content tends to last and stand the test of time. So if I upload some sort of tech video or going over, you know, this product I purchased for the Firebird that I think everybody should check out, I find that I'll get comments on that video or a whole bunch of views. It'll be months after posting it. And I, I just think that aspect of is is really cool that you have people who can go back to your videos all this time later. Whereas on Instagram, very rarely do people go back and check out old posts. So, yeah, and I think I found that in the past myself, where you know Grant and I have talked about before the purpose of Instagram in one aspect is to kind of give you a sneak peek behind what you're doing over on the other social medias. And so people who may be Instagram followers can kind of jump over there uh, and check it out. So it's not, like I said, you, you use the term shelf life. I think that's a pretty good uh, way of putting it. And for those of you guys who are out there that maybe aren't utilizing social media, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, um, uh, Instagram, you know, those are some of the areas that you might want to focus on to say, okay, I might be able to build an audience here differently than I can build an audience over there. And if one or two or a certain percentage jump over, great, uh, because uh, it's uh, it's all about building the audience. One thing that we talked about before we went live was uh, was your presence on 
uh, on YouTube and, you know, basically how you kind of, uh, you know, you're, you're doing these vlog style videos. You're talking, you know, about your builds and how you got there and different components and such. Uh, I just flipped over your channel. You're at 13,500 subscribers. What got you into YouTube and what's keeping you going? To be honest, what got me into YouTube was just seeing other friends do it. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends. They have so much fun with it, uh, you know, especially seeing one of my friends you've had on the show, uh, Craig909. You know, he served as a bit of inspiration for my own channel. And uh, while our content is very different, I'm just I like to maintain that, you know, my content is either going to be somewhat educational and informative so somebody maybe walks away learning something or at the very least it was something that i enjoyed doing and i just want to put it out there and that's kind of how i've kept my content going <laughs> that that last bit when you're talking about your your how to videos that reminds me of a quote from when we had ellie's garage on her and her dad said we, we don't we don't claim to be a how-to channel it's a how we did it channel yeah. And I, it's always kind of stuck with me and resonated with me. You, I mean, before we went live, you were talking about, we were all kind of talking about our, our blunders, but we still upload them, you know, to be transparent and like, Hey, we're humans on the other side of the camera too. Uh, so really appreciate that for sure. But I wanted to go back to the, the whole, uh, just because we were, we were just trying to book in the Instagram versus YouTube discussion there a little bit. We would normally save this question for a little later on, in the show but it just seems like now is a more appropriate time mm -hmm. but when you think about it what what's maybe a good tip or trick you could you could leave the audience of maybe like a growth strategy or, or lesson learned something that hey if i knew this sooner in my journey on instagram or youtube what, what will be that kind of piece of advice you'd give give to the audience I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I feel like, you know, um, if you go back on my channel, uh, you know, some of my first few uploads were always very product based and or if not that very technical, like, you know, going over the GM corporate eight and a half rear end and giving like an information overload on what that is. And um, so initially I thought the way to go about the channel and its content was to just have it be strictly information and have people, you know, learn from it. But just recently, I would say in the last maybe three months, um, my boyfriend and I started to upload some of our junkyard content, which initially I never thought was that interesting. I always thought it's him and I struggling in the junkyard in the heat of the day. Who the heck wants to watch us pull these crappy engines out? And, you know, what surprised me is that's the content that has since really kind of grown my channel and um, you know, you, you mentioned, okay, I hit 13,000 subs. I would say three months ago, I was at half that. And I, I would say advice would be to the stuff that you think is not that interesting, or maybe you think, oh, well, we kind of, you know, kind of look stupid here, um, is the stuff people might actually resonate with and think is entertaining and funny. And then they get both the information and educational aspect from your channel and a bit of entertainment too. So, you know, the perfect blend is what you got to focus on. And and to go along with that too, I think is, you know, you never thought that the junkyard videos would be successful and they seem to be, they seem to be for you. Um, that's another little tip maybe that we can throw out there that says, you don't know what people are interested in until you throw it to the wall and see what sticks. You might think it's just mundane stuff. And somebody uh, recently had asked me, you know, why don't I do any used car dealership content on my channel? Cause I'm a used car dealer. And yeah. I said, when I first started my channel, a lot of people didn't want to see that. My, it, there was very few views. Um, some people thought it was interesting, but most don't care. So I stopped doing that and I kind of switched to more of a project car base. But like you said, finding what people want to see that that's ultimately what the whole YouTube algorithm uh, or catch is for everybody that's out there creating videos is trying to figure that out. Um, some of us, it takes longer than others, but I mean, I'm still willing to throw uh, anything out there to see what happens. You seem to have done a very good job with your, uh, you know, your garage, 
first start on an engine stand type, you know, things. I, I, I just watched that video. That's why it's fresh in my mind. But um, like, I really do enjoy watching those style videos. I mean, yeah, you took a motor out of a junk air. Chances are it's going to run, but it's not in the vehicle anymore. We got to, you know, what hoops do we have to jump through uh, to get there? You put a carburetor on it. Guys, I'm, I'm giving away the video. If you haven't seen that video, go over and, and check it out because it's pretty interesting. Uh, you know, Travis is getting pretty excited trying to uh, get that thing started. Uh, there's a few follies in there too. Don't, uh, don't, don't miss out on that one. <laughs> so what, um, we know that you've got the built uh, six liter. Mm -hmm. uh, this new engine that you that you just recently acquired. What is the goal for that engine? Um, so ooh, when you say new engine, I mean there's a bunch of engines we just purchased that I haven't even said yet. So there's always new engines, but um, so yeah, we have the hot. 365 that we just did like the whole build on it's got the white zoomies it's really done up that one's going in the el camino um that car is going to end up being a stick shift drag car and then with um the other lq4 that we fired up in that video i'm actually going to be saving that for a future project so while i don't have a third vehicle yet i have my mind set on something that i want I just have to find it now. So that'll wind up going in the third vehicle. <laughs> I have a Yugo if you're interested. Maybe it would fit in a Yugo. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> well, I did want to make mention uh, to, to say thanks uh, for, to Coastal Auto Reaction for his uh, 2099 uh, Canadian dollar. So what's that? I don't know what Derek Derek from Vice Script Garage is usually pretty good at translating uh the, the exchange rate there but so thank you luke for for sending that our way and did want to say hi i know um earlier on country boy gas garage said hello to me so i just want to say hey back <laughs> so um but live uh i guess you know i i'm not to put you on the spot but i guess i will um <laughs> the, the, when you're talking about a potential third car coming down the pike and in you don't have to let that cat out of the bag, but we do always like to kind of go around the horn and talk about maybe what some upcoming content might be on our channels or, or Instagram. So maybe you don't uh, spill the beans on what that third car wants to be, but what's, what's maybe coming up on your channel next? Um, coming up. I mean, I've been wanting to try to do some truck content, like late model truck. I mean, we have a 2012 Silverado and a 2004 Avalanche, which may not sound like the most appealing vehicles, but I've also found that uh, late model truck content tends to do well because so many people have those vehicles. So I'd like to see what that does and see if it kind of takes off or not. I'll always have the muscle cars. They will always be the center of the channel, but that's something I've been wanting to try. And then, you know, uh, it's not set in stone, so I can let the cat out of the bag here. Um, I've been really hunting for a um, Pontiac Tempest, either a 66 or a 67. Those are my two favorite years. And, uh, you know, Travis and I are thinking we want to try our hand at this whole burnout competition thing and, probably put together a really cool burnout car with that third vehicle. So have it not be so drag centric and, you know, put on a good show. Well, we got another uh, $5 super chat, $5 Canadian coming in from Katrina's garage. And she says that uh, she really needs to get together with you at some point, Liv. She really appreciates what you do, I guess, uh, just like the rest of us. Um, we are going to open up the chat for questions for Liv. So if you guys have got any questions that you want to answer, go ahead and put them in there. We're not going to be able to answer all of them, but we'll get to most of them um, before we move on. Grant, uh, seeing how you opened up the bag on the what's coming up, what do you got for Street Six fans in the near future? Well, so I had all intentions on Monday night to go out to the garage to film the Wednesday upload. Um, and then I, there was a puddle of water in the garage and I was like, huh, why is there a puddle of water in the garage? Well, my hot water heater went out the, over the course this week. So, um, I, it'll, you'll either see some welding content up next, or it's, uh, what I was going to film that night was if I could change one thing on project low Fairmont, it was going to be a kind of a, oh, when I used to do five minute Fridays, kind of inspired format, uh, kind of going through a top five, Hey, if I could. 
I could change one thing, what would I do? So how about you, Jason? Well, I must admit, um, I was trying to get a video ready uh, for tomorrow night, but there's not going to be one. Instead, I have a couple of shorts uh, that I've been working on. I've been playing around with the YouTube algorithm on YouTube Shorts, seeing how it's new in Canada for us as of recently. Uh, a few of them have done very well, uh, and another one has, or most of them have just kind of flopped, but uh, I'm learning. So uh, there's not any uh, regular video this week. I've just been playing around with some shorts and I've been trying to get at least one out per day, uh, hoping to drive some traffic. So stay tuned. Uh, there's one going out, I believe, at midnight tonight and another one uh, coming up very quickly as well. Uh, Novataz, another five bucks. Bubbles, lives matter. Yes, it does. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that. I really appreciate that. Uh, I think we've kind of been around the around the gamut here with um, with what's coming up on each other's channels. Um, I do see there's a question in there, and it seems to be a common question from King Eric, the greatest of all. Uh, would Liv consider working on Mercury Cougars? Had to ask. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not super knowledgeable on Ford products. However, uh, when I was up at Steve's, they had the uh, Bang Shift Cougar in the garage, just kind of sitting for a while between shoots and that was the car i actually rebuilt the holly 4150 carburetor on that um steve had sent it to me and he kind of i really appreciate it actually he sent it to me as sort of a carb to play around with and just see if i even knew what i was doing with it and he didn't seem to mind if i messed it up at all but i actually really took my time with it i learned all about them and put it back together and he says he's been running it ever since. I mean, well, before the car just recently broke, but he said it was running pretty good. So, <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I, I'd like to expand into Ford products too. I'm not totally partial to GM. It's just what I know most about. <laughs> and it looks like we've got a question from uh, Two Tall's Model Car Garage. Liv, did you tell them about my model car? Oh my gosh, he is so talented. If you guys haven't seen his work, you really need to. He builds like uh, to scale cars and wow, the level of detail. He he did one of my Firebird and I just couldn't believe somebody who's never even seen the car in person and like what he was able to capture is incredible. So his name is Taylor. If, if you haven't seen his stuff, go, go check it out for sure. <laughs> well, I would challenge Taylor if he can find a 1979 Cordoba or 1978 Ford Fairmont to build a model of like, by all means, what Jason and I won't, uh, won't pass those up. But uh, Jason, if you could, I was going to have you scroll way up. It was right after Katrina's garage super chat um, on fire media group had asked. Hi, Liv. If you had the opportunity to have your own reality show sh someday, what will the style of stories you will you would like to show? Hmm. I've always thought about this. If I had to do like some sort of, you know, TV show, I guess you could call it something that I'm super passionate about that I never really get to share or talk about that much are movie cars, because ultimately that's what got me into cars. So I'm a total geek when it comes to famous cars that have been in movies and I'd love to do some sort of content or rather a show about that and you know talk about the charger from Dirty Mary Crazy Larry or the Nova in Death Proof and just that sort of stuff is is really like where I shine <laughs> and I think I popped a question up and that's a, actually I like that idea because movie cars are almost what most I can't speak for everybody. Movie cars are kind of what got me uh, into the whole collection and, and stuff of model cars as a kid. Uh, therefore, you know, moving you forward into bigger full-size cars and obviously more expensive cars. But um, yeah, I think that would be a great topic of conversation, Grant, for a Car Guy and Six Fan Show Legacy episode at some point. Keep Mark that one down. Uh, <laughs> not to steal your idea, but hey, uh, nevertheless, I think Do that it. I had a... I had a question in here somewhere from where's oh uh drew hobbins had asked uh are you bringing the bird to the duct tape drags 
Yes. So, hey, Drew, how's it going? Um, yeah, so I am going to be bringing it to duct tape. That's the plan. The only thing that's kind of concerning me is I'm realizing kind of running out of time to test the car. So I'm thinking the very first time I'm going to get a chance to ever drive it down a drag strip is going to be in front of a huge crowd of people. So I'm a little nervous for that. But, you know, we're just going to send it and see what happens. <laughs> And of course, you kind of already uh, tickled the uh, Ford uh, question here a little bit, but uh, <laughs> Layla Fox 92, would you ever consider building a Fox body? You know, absolutely I would. I, I love Lauren. Thanks for watching, Lauren. Um, Fox body is the platform for drag racing. Like there's just, as, as it sits, there's so much you can do with them or not do with them. You can run them as is, put a hotter engine in it. And um, I would love to do something like that. A car that you don't truly need to completely redo, sort of like what I've been doing with my Firebird. <laughs> Earlier, uh, Classic Driver's Garage had asked, how often do you get the question, when are you painting the Firebird, Liv? <laughs> I get that every day, <laughs> every single day. And people can't stand that the car is just this half black, half red. They really don't understand it. But, you know, my thought process is, you know, I paid all this money for a fiberglass clip. I'm going to show it off. <laughs> I'm going to let the world know it's fiberglass. So <laughs> no intention on painting it. And uh, a lot of people who do like it don't want me to because they say the car is just so recognizable as it sits that, you know, why bother changing it? <laughs> Well, we had talked about that before we, uh, we before we went live, and I told you that I appreciated the fact that you you drive uh, a ratty car, and I didn't mean any disrespect by that. But one of the things that you brought up was that the it is recognizable. Like anybody sees a uh, seventy one uh, Firebird out there, that's you know that burgundy color with the black clip it is. I mean, there's probably <laughs> not very many of them out there. They're gonna automatically know whose it is uh, and be looking for you. So yeah, it's almost like a branding thing. Right. Yeah, I've kind of thought of it that way. Initially, it wasn't. It was more me just not wanting to spend the money on a paint job. But it's kind of turned into, yeah, it is sort of a branding thing. It's really recognizable. So the plan is to not paint either car. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so we got a question in from uh, Luke over at Coastal Auto Reaction asking you uh, if you know what your ET goal would be for drag racing. ET goal, I would just really like to break into the 11s, whether the car is more capable or not, um, we'll figure that out. But I just really hope it's first time out off the trailer, it'll do an 11. That's just all I ask. And main goal is I'm trying to set it up actually for wheelies. So that's not necessarily going to help ET, but I just think that'd be super cool. <laughs> it'll look cool for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I know a while ago, uh, Jason and I, we we had a, you know, since we're cross borders, you'll say we had a little fun with a little competition um, trying to tally up who, and Jason kicked my arse, by the way, um, in <laughs> subscriber count. But um, maybe, Liv, you and Dylan McCool could have some sort of competition and tally up how many times you asked, when are you painting your fill in the blank car yeah. and <laughs> see who gets more, more, more of those. But uh, yeah. Well, Let's I mean, see. we're, uh, oh, go ahead, Jason. One, I'll just get one, one last question there um, from uh, Two Tall's Model Car Garage. Do you plan on participating in the Rocky Mountain Race Week? If so, he wants to meet up with you. Absolutely. So Rocky Mountain Race Week and Hot Rod Drag Week are actually the two events that kind of push the cars in the direction they've gone, which is while they are going to be, you know, they're very like drag race oriented they have to be street legal and I want to drive them, you know, on these endurance style events. So, um, you know, I plan on it. I can't say exactly when, because it's more of a cost thing for me more than anything, but a hundred percent, that's the goal is to run that event. <laughs> and that's my neck of the woods. So I live in Kansas, so we'll, I'll be uh, definitely following and making sure I know when that year comes, Liz. Sweet. So we'll be looking forward to it. The El Camino, obviously, is probably maybe a little better built for that. To uh, if you got to throw some slicks in the back of the El Camino, might be a little more conducive to that. Oh but yeah, for sure. I think we'd all love seeing the Firebird pull a trailer too. So. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. So I guess uh, I, I we're we're getting pretty well close to the end of the show here, but I uh, you know we we are still we do still have the chat open a little bit there. But uh, one of the questions that I had was, uh, you know, with COVID uh, over the last year and a half or year and a bit, whatever it's been. Do you find that that's hindered you from doing some of the things that you've wanted to do with your channel? You know, I initially I felt that way. I thought, oh, wow, all these events are, you know, being canceled. And, you know, I was really looking forward to doing some of those, you know, in terms of getting content as well. But I feel like it really pushed me in a different direction and for the better, which was to sort of like work with what you have and when I say that, it's like we've we always go to the junkyard, so those never really close down. So we decided to instead of doing content at certain events, we're like, well, why don't we just start filming the junkyard stuff since we're doing it anyway? And like I said, that really helped uh, grow the channel quite a bit. And so from that, and you know, getting those engines, then we're able to produce even more videos just at home in the garage. And you know, it's sort of this continual content and building an audience that's interested in engines. I just didn't think that was a possibility. So I kind of have to say, if it wasn't for the cancellation of some of these events, I don't know if I would be doing this right now. I guess the question I have for you, Liv, uh, is. Jason and I are both fairly anti LS swap the world, but none of us, neither of us really have nothing against an LS. We get, we get it. We get why it's <laughs> good, cheap, reliable horsepower. Like we're not going to have that debate at all because we just know that you can't, can't beat it. But um, with, with that phenomenon or that craze, I guess I'll just ask you, what's your most obscure? Cause we like weird stuff here on the car guy and six man show. What's your most obscure idea for LS swapping, you know, a uh, fill in the blank. Hmm. That one, you know, I haven't given much thought to that, but I do want to do some crazy things with LS engines, like something I, would like to do which is kind of bizarre and people will hate me for it on both sides i wanted to take an ls and i like the style of magnuson supercharger which is like kind of a low profile thing so it'll still fit under a hood but what i want is for either somebody or for myself to create some sort of adapter that would allow us to stick two carburetors on top of that and then do a carbureted supercharger ls setup so that's kind of something I've been thinking about. Don't know when that'll happen, but <laughs> kind of not a swap, but just an LS idea. <laughs> hey, if you're going to piss off the guys who don't want LSs in their vehicles, you might as well peel off, piss off the LS guys who don't want carburetors that's, too. <laughs> that's exactly it. you got to hit both sides. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we got another $5 super chat from uh, Mike over at Narcoleptic Customs. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Grant is heading away on vacation, I think, in two weeks' time, Grant? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So anyways, uh, Grant will not be around for the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. And uh, Mike will be co-hosting uh, that week that, we, uh, that, that Grant would normally do that. So... Uh, thanks, Mike, for the super chat, and we appreciate uh, you filling in for that. And for the following week, I think it's September 2nd, maybe my mind is going, but anyways, uh, the second week that Grant's not in, uh, Luke from Coastal Auto Reaction will be filling in one more time, uh, helping me on that show. So I appreciate that as well, Luke. Um, yeah, I think we're getting close to the end of the show here. Uh I don't think I have anything else that I want to add, Liv. Thank you so much for uh, for taking some time out. I know uh, it's generally early on the uh, West Coast or wherever it is, and uh, we, we thank you for taking that time out and being, uh, being with us tonight. Thank you, guys. This is so much fun. I love this. <laughs> well, that means we've done our we've done our part we've done our job the right way if we made it fun for you that's what we love hearing that so it it's been a real pleasure to have you on the show live and um i think i think i speak for the chat too it's just it was a great it was a great conversation and um certainly if you're up to it we still jason and i joke that we haven't 
selected an Alec Baldwin version of the Car Guy and Six Fan Show, the guest that just keeps coming back and back and back. So that that seat is still open. So if you want to become that on the Car Guy and Six Fan Show, you're always welcome. Awesome. No, this was fun. I'd, I'd love to. So Jason, is that your sign? Do you want me to close this out or what's the deal? <laughs> yeah, I was just... I thought I was losing uh, Wi-Fi there for a second, but yeah, I think uh, I think that's it. We've uh, we've done our due diligence. If you want to close the show out, and then we'll have a little bit of a after show here when we go off air. Yes, well, again, I will say thanks one more time, Liv, for coming on the show. And um, but that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. Keep in mind, we do alternate between channels, so you have to be subscribed to both Jason and myself. So next week's episode will be on my channel. Same bat time different bat channel but uh, i guess what i'll say then to close this out to all my six fans out there thanks for watching <laughs>